Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Math Bell. I am here with another great elementary math resource tutorial, bar graphs. You're going to learn two ways to make a bar graph using PowerPoint. One is using the preset tabs for making graphs. The second way is kind of from scratch, starting with the grid. Let's get started. With your new slide, you're going to go up to insert, then go over to chart, click on column and choose the first option, which will create a 2D vertical bar graph. Once that is selected, an Excel sheet will actually pop up so that you can input your graph data. It will transfer your information onto the bar graph in PowerPoint. We're only going to have one series of information, so we will delete series two and three. Then adjust the lines to fit the series one column in five rows for our five categories. Here, you can see that as we type, changes are being made on our bar graph. We'll use a fun topic for students, favorite food for lunch. Next, change the categories to types of food and input what numbers represent student votes. Now we are done with the Excel sheet and our new graph is created. That is the major part of creating the bar graph this way. The graph can be moved around, the size can be adjusted, title, font, size, and color can be changed. Let me also show you how to change the color of the bars. Select the bars, go up to chart design, and over to change colors. The range of colors is based on your selected theme. To change the theme, click on the design tab and choose the theme that you want. Next, go back to chart design and change colors and select the color that you want for the bars. Now let's add in our labels. Go to Add Chart Element and select Axis Titles, Primary, Horizontal. We'll label it Types of Food. Do the same steps for the side label, except choose Primary Vertical. Label it Number of Students. Again, once you're done, you can move everything around as one group. Let's start with setting up our grid. Go to Insert Table, for this bar graph, we'll need 16 columns and 11 rows. Adjust the table design by choosing a no style table. Next, adjust the layout under the layout tab. We want the cells to be a square shape so the length and width will both be 5 tenths. Next, we're going to add in the numbers to go with the scale. Since our data points only go up to 10, we're going to create text boxes that include 0 through 10. After inserting a text box, start with the number 10, pull it closer to the grid, duplicate it by selecting the text box and hitting Ctrl D or Command D on your keyboard to make the zero. Place the zero between the X axis and Y axis. Now we'll duplicate the 10 again to get the numbers one through nine. Once all the numbers have been adjusted, select them all by going to Shape, Format, click Arrange, then Align, then Align Right to ensure they are all aligned perfectly. Next, go back to Shape Format, click Arrange, then Align, but this time choose Distribute Vertically so that the numbers line up with the horizontal lines going across the grid. Next, let's create labels for each category, which are food types. So again, we have hamburger, Adjust the font and size how you see fit, then Ctrl or Command D to duplicate for the other category labels. Then we have the hot dog. And what we're going to do is line up each label under two columns because we want our bars to be thicker. You can have them take up one column or more if you'd like. There are the five labels of food types. In this next section, which is optional, group the numbers together and group the labels together. They are easier to move this way and one text box will not be moved on accident. Next, let's select the entire grid and go over to table design and we're going to adjust the color to like a lighter gray and make the lines thinner. Click on border and select all borders to make those changes. Now we're going to shade in the bars for each of our categories. Highlight the section for the first bar, then choose the color that you want for the bars under shading on the table design tab. Repeat that for each bar.
Now, let's get rid of the grid lines in each bar. Select the bar and go back to border. However, this time select inside horizontal border. Repeat that for each bar. Next, do the same thing, but this time get rid of the inside vertical border. You'll see all of the changes once you click away from the grid. The next part is to outline the outside borders of each bar to help them pop in front of the grid. Select each bar, Go back to the pen color and line thickness to make adjustments. Then click borders again and then click outside borders. Do this for each bar. Next, for a visual effect, we'll delete the top border and right side border. Select each one at a time, go to borders and click the section that you want deleted. Last, we'll thicken the line for our left side border and bottom border. Now that the bar graph is created, save it all as an image. Right click, save as image, so that we can adjust the size as we want without affecting the elements. After doing that, let's add a new blank slide, go to insert, picture, picture from file, and select our new image. Here you can see how we can manipulate the image how we want. The next things we'll do is add in the title, access title or labels, and a key. Go to insert a text box. Just like we did in part one, the title will be favorite food for lunch. Duplicate the text box for our access titles. The title of our categories is types of food. For our side axis title, we'll rotate the text box vertically by rotating it to 270 degrees. As you rotate it, the degrees will pop up. The numbers represent the number of students or student votes. Finally, we'll duplicate the text box again for the key to our scale. Change the wording and settings. Let's make this pop out by going to Shape Format, Shape Fill, make it white, and the outline a dark gray. Finish it off by saving it all again as an image. To make a horizontal bar graph, you're going to do the exact same steps as before, except you will switch the places of your categories and your scale. We would need a table with 11 columns and 16 rows instead. Other than that, all of the other steps are the same. And just like part three, to make a horizontal bar graph using the preset button, you'll complete the same steps as in part one. You'll just start by clicking on the 2D horizontal bar graph button instead. In this section, let's look at how to take your new bar graph and create a printable worksheet for students to answer questions. For this, we're going to use a new presentation where we've changed the slide size to 8.5 by 11. Next, insert a picture. Choose the bar graph that you want to use. Resize it to fit the page how you want it to. Then, add in your questions. Here I already have some questions already saved as an image but you can also insert a text box and type in your questions. If you want two graphs on your page, I suggest making it landscape. Then insert the two graphs, resize them, then add in your questions. 